How's it going? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, man? All right, I hope you guys are ready. It's Monday and it's 11.30 actually on the dot. Thanks it's Tuesday. Monday? Or Wednesday. Oh, <laughs> oh my. It's Wednesday. Wednesday, coffee coaches. Wednesday, 11.30. This whole week got me all tripped upside down from starting. We didn't even start late. It was just a short day on Monday. That yeah, it's it's so cool. But yes, it's Wednesday, 11.30, coffee with the coaches. I know I have my coffee. Um, I have my little concoction here. Which is uh, delicious. Yes, it's amazing. Everyday fit. Uh, with our wellness shot and a little bit of our everyday energy as well too. So super hydrated, super energized, ready to rock this. So let's do it. What do you got, Sean? Just, just water. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But before we get into anything, we got a handful of announcements to make. First and foremost, if you're watching this right now, today, live, or on the replay as of today, that means tomorrow, this Thursday, the 3rd, uh, we we're having a strength assessment, all right? So basically what that means is when you come in, it's not gonna be a regular workout. It's not gonna be, you know, stations or rotations or tornadoes or any of that. We're gonna come in and we're gonna test how many push-ups, how many squats, how many sit-ups, how many jumping jacks and your plank that you can do in a, in a certain amount of time. So it's a lot of fun. We did one in, was it December or January? Do you remember? Uh, December, I think. Yeah, we did one at the, either really early in the beginning of the year or really late last year. Either way. We got it done, so for those of you that did it then, now is a great time to see how much progress you've made over these past uh, six months or so. And if it's your first time doing it, then it's a great time to see where you are right now. Um, it's always cool to see. I know a handful of the coaches got to do it last time and kind of see for themselves, so I'm actually excited to see how they do at the end. Um, because of course, if you don't, everybody's in partners for that one, so if you don't have a partner, you get a coach. So yeah. let's see if you're the lucky <laughs> person. But as far as that, Tomorrow, really big deal for that strength assessment. And of course, if you have not scheduled a body scan yet, for whatever reason, go ahead and do so. If you are a VIP member, it is part of your membership. Make sure you go onto it. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of great information on there. And if you're a challenger or a trial member, make sure that you do it as well. You get it in, you can see where you are. If you started already, if it's your first week, or if you're at the end of the challenge right now and you did it at the beginning, it's already been almost six weeks. So go ahead and take a look. That way we can get that data and just see how far you've come in what is really a very short amount of time. Because I know I love doing it. I know, Sean, you've been doing scans too, and it's been a great experience from what I've heard, right? Yes. It's always good to find out like where you are and what you need to change. And that's the best thing about this thing too, is because it does give you a complete breakdown of where you are. Um, so when we're doing the tracking and the measurements, especially when we're in challenge mode, that's a great picture of what we need to do week by week. But the cycle kind of gives us an overall look of, at your wellness and kind of like what we need to do short term, mid term, and long term. It's a really great way to set up your goals and make a reassessment and adjustment and then take action on those. I was just going to ask you if you thought it was a great tool to help you reassess the <laughs> fitness goals. So uh, you nailed it though. So. <laughs> As a good segue into the topic of our conversation today. Yes. So, if you've not heard already, the topic of our conversation <laughs> is reassessing and what that really means. Now, that was the theme of the week last week. Um, so, you definitely probably had some time to, to sit on it, to kind of think about it, because we did nothing but shout it at the end of the session to talk about it a little bit more. But with all that being said, it's a, it's a really big thing. Like when you, when you sit down and kind of think, okay, like I have this goal or I have this dream, or I have like whatever I want to accomplish in the future, and I need to go from point A to point B, somewhere along that route, you're gonna probably get just like knocked a little bit of speed. And it's it's like that that one thing where it's like, if you're like one degree off from where you started, you're gonna end up way away from where you are. So you have to make sure that you're always checking in with yourself, that way you can line back up. Because just like a slight degree of separation throws you off the course of what you actually want, and it makes the trip a heck of a lot longer, or more tedious, or more stressful, rather than you know, dialing in, taking a second for yourself, and looking at where you are now and where you want to go. I know there's probably nobody more eager to talk about it than Coach Daniel, because you spent the last weekend or so, or a of days, <laughs> doing all of that. Yeah. So I think it's a great way for you to start off. Man. Uh, so yeah, so last week, if you guys saw my post on Facebook, I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, I think I posted it on Sunday morning or so. So I took a few days off last week, Last uh, Tuesday through Thursday, uh, by myself, I rented a cabin up in Arnold, up in the Sierras, and just needed to get away from all the you know out, outside uh, world and just all the uh, the the chaos and, and just kind of like reconnect with myself and reassess 
uh, my goals for not only for the business but also for my life as well too. Initially, I went to to work on reassessing the operations manual for the business, so that way we can help uh, create better systems. So that way we can train our train the coaches and, and provide better coaching and training to them. Um, but I was having a lot of struggle with it, and the reason why I was kind of struggling starting that process is because I wasn't exactly sure where we wanted the business to go. I had some, you know, we had we have goals set in place, but I wasn't like had a definite plan of like this is where we're going in the future and so I had to take that time to reassess those goals and make sure that I was certain of where we where we wanted to take the business um, but then I even had to backtrack even further of like where do I want to take my own life and so I spent um, a good portion of those three days working on myself and what I want for my my vision and my purpose in life um, and I was Doing a lot of, I do a lot of personal development uh, on the, on like constantly, basically as a part of my everyday ritual. Um, so I was listening to a lot of books, reading books, uh, listening to podcasts, watching them. Uh, I watched a couple presentations um, on, on trying to just help help you develop your purpose in life. And so I just had all this stuff like, you know, running around in my mind and, and just trying to work on on who I was and where I wanted my life to go and. And I was also exercising, doing a bunch of stuff while I was out there too, doing some, some trail runs and hikes. Um, and then all that stuff that was like jumbling around in my head, like all those different ideas of what I wanted to do, just kind of narrowed down. And I was able to, to uh, focus on exactly how I needed to, to plan out my life so I can live out my bigger vision for myself. Um, then I went back. Uh, to my cabin, I typed it all up and just made sure I documented everything that went on in my head because it was just uh, such a great experience. I didn't want to forget any of it, so I, I wrote everything down. Um, and then I figured out, I wrote down like, what my vision is for my life, and then I wrote down um, different things that are important to me that are going to help me stay in line with that. And so uh, that was for my life, and then once I had that sorted out, I was able to focus on the operations manual and where I wanted to take the business, and then I started doing that. And so, just you know, the, the end goal never really changed. You know, obviously, we want to have a successful uh, Fit Body location and, and help uh, thousands of uh, people in our community, have a, a great team of coaches, and just you know, inspire fitness and change lives. And that's what we're, we're all about. And I obviously want to continue that. Uh, but I had to reassess the the the. the the in-between part of it to get us from where we are today to where we want to be in the future. So the end goal didn't change, just you know, the journey on how to get there is what, what changed and, and taking that time for myself to, to, to reconnect and reassess those goals was, was super uh, needed and I think the only way I could have done it. So uh, yeah, it was, it was an awesome experience. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm trying not to go off the deep end there, but, but uh, there's a lot of stuff that that I, I did to, to, to help me get there, but that's kind of like a high level of what, what happened. But, uh, we'll, we'll lock in our own, just give you yeah. a microphone, you can go all the handle. Yes, <laughs> exactly. You know, most people reassess their goals like around New Year's, but then they don't do anything really after that. Like they just, they, they sit down and write down their goals and then all of a sudden like they're motivated and inspired and that is very short term, it lasts for like a month or so, and then you just forget about it. And I'll be honest, that's how it happened for me earlier this year too, I wrote down those goals. I kind of re referred back to it a couple of times, but in, in two months I just, you know, it went out the window and then I just kept on going on about my life. And I never revisited uh, those goals until just last week. So, super important to reassess for sure. So would you say it gave you like a lot of clarity for like the short term and the long term. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's why I was having. I knew. I know that's why I was having such a hard time doing the operations manual. I was kind of stuck on it, but now I have so much clarity and so much focus on what I want in my life that I just I feel better. I feel like I, it's weird. I feel, I feel physically lighter. Like I just have like a little bit more pep in my step. I'm like more optimistic. I have a better outlook on the future. Um, I don't obviously have every every plan in place for like every day or every month for the rest of my life. Obviously, that's not practical. Uh, but just knowing what what I need to keep in line 
to ensure that I'm happy, to make sure that I have enough energy throughout the day, and to make so that way I can fulfill my purpose. And, and that's basically what I got out of it. That's, yeah, it was it was awesome. Um, you guys should do it for sure. So, <laughs> so, 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 yeah, no, the next question I was gonna have is like, do I have permission to like take a small hiatus? Yeah, <laughs> yes. After the challenge is over, you can take a vacation. All right. So, <laughs> Yeah, it was good stuff. Um, but I don't know, what about you guys? You guys, how often do you guys reassess your your goals or? Um, so as far as like my goals go, my goals really haven't changed because I did a reassessment like when I got hired here about what I wanted. And you know, that was to finish my degree in dietetics. I was to graduate and be able to influence and help as many people as I possibly could. That hasn't changed. My personal goal of having a balanced lifestyle in all aspects hasn't changed. But the reassessment of how I'm getting there does change because when I'm looking at all the information that I need to study, that I need to learn, and it's like, yes, I want to learn everything I can about, let's say, biomechanics, so I understand how the body moves and how it works. But is that a direct correlation to my larger goal scheme at hand? Not entirely. So it's about kind of like assessing what I'm doing, what classes I'm taking, what certifications I'm going after, and making sure that all of those are lining up with my goal. And if it's not, assessing what the value is and if it's worth the sacrifice. Because you can't do everything, you can't know everything, and you can't master everything. You have to choose certain things that you're gonna master. And that's what's great about being a part of a team, is realistically, I could really dive into nutrition, get after my dietetics, knowing that Valencia, is on the other end just reading books about how each finger moves and each toe moves and right and so <laughs> when i have a question i can call Lindsay and be like hey man you know i'm really struggling with this mechanic i don't really understand what's happening here could you help me out could you explain it? i still need a basis of information but do i really need to dive that deep into it maybe not for my end goals and for my dreams so constantly kind of like making those reassessments and saying like what am i willing to sacrifice what is not you know not option, this has to get done. So kind of doing that week to week and semester by semester, kind of whenever I have an opportunity to look at what I'm doing and say, okay, what can I change to make myself more efficient, make myself better and improve a little bit every single day. So, awesome. What about you? So, I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like thinking about that, I was like, do I? But no, yes, kind of. Anyways, so when it comes to me and like my, my the way that I reassess this stuff, um, I want to say it happens like fairly frequently. Um, it is definitely not part of my schedule because again, I'm terrible with scheduling and that's something that I'm consistently working on. And as you can say, it's one of my goals that I'm constantly reassessing <laughs> to get better at scheduling. But, um, but no, like uh, Sean brings up an extremely valid point too. Like, I have the specific things that I want to achieve in life. Like I have like my really big high level goals that's like you tell people and they're like, you're crazy. Like how are you going to get there? And I'm like, I'm going to figure it out. That's my yeah. goal. Uh, figure like, it out. Yeah. Like what, what <laughs> Everything in life is figure it out. Pretty much. <laughs> like, one of my big dreams is to work. I don't know why I went there, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to, like, keep it in there. Uh, but, like, one of my biggest dreams for, for instance, is to work with, with, like, professional athletes or D1 athletes. Like, that is that is a big goal that I have. And it's, like, when I'm going – just like how Sean says, when I'm going throughout like my emotions, it's like, does it directly help me to go to that goal? At the end of the day, like, does getting my my degree in kinesiology uh, and a master's in sports performance, like, does that go towards that goal, or is there a lot of negative space there that I can cut out? Because like certain things that I do on the opposite end of the spectrum, like, yes, I know a lot about like body functions and bi uh, biomechanics for for where I'm at. But like when it comes to certain things, like don't get Sean started with sugar alcohols because it's gonna be a conversation you don't understand, but he does and he's right. So like, but it's cool. Cause it's like, you don't necessarily need to have all the answers. You don't need to be the person that's like, oh, I know this, 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 this. Um, but you have to know a way in order to like understand what what is, is going on wrong. What is going around, what is going on around you. That was a hard sentence to say. <laughs> But you have to understand, like, have that network of people around you that can help you out to reach that goal. Because, like, certain things, like, when Daniel locked himself in the woods for three days, everything that you talked about, like, it gives you a direction to go. It gives you something to look forward to. It gives you a goal to hit a marker. 
but that doesn't mean that every single thing that you wrote down is like, I have to do this by myself and I have to learn to do these things, correct? Couldn't do it by myself. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, even when you're reassessing goals, it's not just, oh, like, I'm by myself, I'm doing it just by me. It's like, okay, how do I achieve X, Y, Z, and how do I gain this network of people? Like, just by working here, each, everybody in this building has a very specific strength that I necessarily don't have. So it's like, cool, do, do I now have to be like, oh, I have to be smarter than Sean when it comes to this stuff? Do I have to be more business savvy than Daniel when it comes to this stuff? No. But it's like, oh, can I go to Sean if I'm like, I have this question, you can give me an answer. I'm like, cool, I can relay that information. Can I go to Daniel if I have, you know, for whatever reason, any business inquiries? And, and you know, he might have something for me? Yes. And it helps me because instead of having to like, skew off of my own path, to try and figure this out, spend time all the way out here and then redirect back in. I just go a little bit, ask a question, and then recalibrate right back in. Um, and that's kind of how I do things. Like I, I spend a lot of time, I don't use the word networking, but like making a lot of friends like around the world. Like for whatever reason, I have a lot of friends around the world that just like happen, has happened naturally. And it's all been great because I've learned from each and every single one of them. And what I realize is when it comes to the specific goals I have, whether it's education, career, uh, family, uh, faith, like all that stuff, it all helps because it's almost like you're gaining like a small, a small, uh, like a community, a personal community to help you out. And I think that's as important as just like singularly doing things one at a time. Because like we said, like, you could just run this business by yourself. No, absolutely not. And I could like, I, I could not like, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have a job. Like it's like everything is with the community, is with the team, is with growth. And so when it comes to, to like reassessing goals, yes, there are things that I'm not good at, there are things that I need to have opportunities with, and there's things that I have to constantly look at and be like, am I doing the right thing by moving in this direction? Do I need to ask advice in order to move in this direction? Do I need to seek help in order to reach this direction? Do I need to make myself uncomfortable with jumping out of an airplane with Coach Sean? <laughs> yes. Like, so that's how I view it. Like there's there's an endless amount of things you can do to reassess your goals to make sure that not necessarily the goal hasn't changed, but that you're doing the best that you can do at this moment to keep yourself like on track and in that straightforward shot. Awesome, yeah, and I'm definitely on that same note too, like reassessing the people that you surround yourself on a, with on a regular basis, because we all know, that, what's that saying, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, yeah. and it's absolutely true. And if, if you're trying to to be, you know, trying to lose like 20 pounds and trying to be a little bit more fit, eat healthier, do all that stuff, be a fit person, you're gonna, and you need to sh really shift your identity of who you are, because at this moment, you're not that person, but that's who you're trying to be. You can't, you can't continue to hang out with people who, who still have that type of lifestyle that, that are gonna hold you back. Even if it's, you know, your, your really close friends, you know, I'm not saying cut people off, uh, but maybe just edit the relationship that you have with certain people, uh, so that way you can, can you can reach the goals that you want for your life. Um, and whether that's like your fitness, your health, or you know, for me it's business. You know, I'm part of a, a leadership mastermind group, uh, or we are here at at, a, at our location. And so just uh, surrounding yourself with people that are on that same path as you is going to help you out along the way as well too. So. Constantly reassess who you're hanging out with, all the information that you take in, you know, what you're reading, watching, listening to. Uh, if you're trying to become a more positive person, you probably shouldn't be listening to like the news and like constantly on social media, because uh, that's just gonna infect your mind and, and not put you in a positive state. So constantly reassess everything around you from people, what you watch, what you listen to, um, so that way you can, you can reach the goals that you're trying to get. Yeah, and it's, it's very, at least for me, it's very obvious and clear. It's like your environment, uh, like, shapes you. And I think Daniel brings up an extremely good point, especially with the editing relationship things. I forgot who I heard it from. Um, and I heard this a long time ago. It was, like, a memory in the back of my brain. But it was, like, you want to have, like, three tiers of, of, like, relationships when it comes to, like, personal growth. One is, like, at the tier of where you currently are in that work. You would technically consider people equals at like whatever that means to you, but it's like you guys are on the same level, whether it's like, at, you know, with positivity, like you guys are emotionally the same way. Business, you guys are like on that same level, like all that stuff. 
Then you want to have a group of people that's like way above you, which is like your aspirations, your goals, where it's like when you go there, you know that you're not at their level, but you're like watching what they're doing, you're seeing what they're doing. And you want to have the people that, and by no means does it mean that they're under you, but they're people that are just at a different lifestyle. Where it's like, you go to them, it's like, you know, sometimes it can be old friends. Like, there's people that I don't hang out with every single day, but I go with, and it's like, is the objective to become, like, the most optimal person in the world? No, it's to kick back and watch TV and, like, enjoy myself and overindulge a little bit for, like, a day. But it's like, finding that balance of people, that way you, you know that you're getting the most for yourself at the end of the day. And I think that's a really good thing, because, of course, like, by no means are we saying, like, oh, cut people off and just, like, burn bridges and do yeah. this. Like, no, like, relationships are relationships. Family is family. Friends are friends. Like, but understand where you are investing the most of your time in. And if it's building you up in the direction you want to go in. Like, have that question. Like, reassess in that aspect, in, in, in that lane. Yeah. And I think it's important, too, like, you got to track everything that you're doing as well. Because if, if you're not tracking this stuff, it's going to be very difficult to reassess it. So to look back and see like, you know, on the fitness journey, if you're trying to lose, like I said, 20 pounds, but you're not tracking how much weight you've lost, you're not tracking your food, how many calories you're consuming, all that stuff, how are you gonna really know how to move forward? And so that, that's a, obviously an important part as well too. And with that, like, you know, if you're trying to track the relationships that you have with certain people to see if they're, they're good relationships and maybe you, you know, start a journal and start tracking, you know, how, how it feels when you hang around with this kind of person or that person, and, and that way you can help, you know, help reassess uh, the type of relationship that you should continue to have with, with those people. So. And I think something cool is, like, I forget that I have this app on my phone, because I forget purposely. I don't even know what it's called at this point. I didn't forget something purposely. <laughs> you just don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> just pretend like you don't have the thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, every single time it pops up, I'm like, oh, I have this, that's right. But it's like, uh, it's like a life tracker thing, which is weird to say. But essentially, like, there's key locations. Like if I'm here, it tracks it as work because I program it. So if I'm at home, it programs it at home. Uh, like it designates like sleep from like the Apple, the Apple Health app or whatever, and like different designations. And like I, I forget that it's in my phone because it's like it's not something I need to look at every single day. But it's cool because every time I look at it, it shows me how many hours I've spent doing one thing or another. Like when, when I was riding my bike to work, it would tell me how many hours in a year I've ridden my bike from here to work. Of course, there's some errors there, but you know, if I was spending time at a friend's house that I, oh, I would always go to, it would tell me how much time I spent there in a year. And it's cool, because it's like, I will literally forget, and then like one notification comes up every single year, and it's like, hey look, and I'm like, okay. And I look and I'm like, oh, this is the, the macro view of everything, and then you can go into weeks and everything. Um, I'll try and find it. I know it exists on my That's phone. That's interesting. Somewhere. I've never heard of that. Yeah, neither have I. Kind of want that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like cool because it's like how many hours do you spend at work? How many hours do you like just by location wise? And I'm like, oh, like, so at a trip. Like GPS tracking? And so as I go macro level, I'm like, oh, this is really interesting. Like I really get a track of how much time that I'm actually spending at like places I want to versus it's just like, oh, you know, I'm at one place or another. Mm -hmm. How do you interpret those numbers like when you get that and you're looking at that? Some make me happy and some make me sad. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> no, it's just cool. I find it very interesting. Yeah. Like, of course, like, for the most part, I'm like, oh, cool. Like, this is how much time I spent driving. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of time. Like, there's a lot of time on the road. But then I look at it like, okay, well, what can I do while I'm driving? If it says I'm spending, you know, let's just ballpark here, like 150 hours driving. Instead of it just being like 150 hours of just music, which I love music, I listen to it, I just love music. It's like, oh, well, if I listen to like a quarter of that with audio, like just a quarter, I still have my music, still have my time. It's a ton of time just listening to books. Yeah. It's like in a year, it's probably like, you know, six, seven books you listen to at like two times speed. It's like, oh. <laughs> two times speed? How yeah. About one there's, no, two. there's a lot yeah, of science behind two. like once you like train your brain to be able to like, comprehend sentences, yeah. and then you put it at two times speed, you're forced to actually like, engage with them more because you have to pay attention to the dialogue and you can't afford mm -hmm. to slip up to where you actually engage with it a lot more. So I listen to like, my audio books at one point at two times speed. Damn, interesting. I'm gonna definitely reassess the speed of my <laughs> audio I see. Books. So, yeah. <laughs> see, that's, I wouldn't have known this unless that's I talked about it. That's a live reassessment. So, yeah. And so, so like, I mow through audio books. Like, when I was commuting, before I worked Did you, go, like, move gradually? Because it goes from, like, one to, like, two, right? Yeah. 
But what I also used to do, this is a fun fact, is what I used to do is I used to look at like rap songs that I liked, I would write like fast lyrics, mm-hmm. and then I would try to keep up bar for bar at like 2.5 times speed, and I would just go. And like, that's how I like kind of got in the habit of doing it. Because I was like, okay, can I rap this whole song at like 2.5 times speed? Let's find out. Half the time it doesn't work. But yeah. then it's like, I was able to really just like understand because I did that for so long. Because it was just fun. It was like, it was like dumb fun when I used to commute. Yeah. Like if people are uh, looking okay. at me down the road, like my neck is like bulging, I'm like, ah, like. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it led to that happen where it's like, oh, if I can listen to a book, you know, if it says, like the, the book that you showed me, it's like five and a half hours long or whatever the audio book. If I listen to it two times a year, I mean, it's a two and a half hours, hours, three hours. Yeah. That's like okay. Well, I can condense that until like a couple of days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought it was cool with my one point two ten speed, <laughs> but I got I got to upgrade. But it's crazy because then you'll like listen to that at regular, and you're like, dude, it's come so on, slow. yeah. And I'm like, and the dog, I'm like, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. My thing is like I'm always doing something. It's usually like I'm like either getting ready for the day or like cooking or cleaning or whatever it is and that's when I'm usually listening to the audio books so it's like it's hard for me to really pay attention to like the 1.5 speed or 2.0 speed but uh, I'm gonna have to try it out. <laughs> Does it go that high? I don't think so. No. Keep progressing. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. You're gonna blow up your, your audio book. But like the, I mean with all, with all the jokes and stuff aside, if I'm like with with all that being said, the the idea really is like, get more clarity on your goals. If you ever feel like you're like muddy in, in your goal or your vision or where you're at, you feel kind of stuck. Like I know I can attest to multiple examples within the last just six months, like multiple times where I'm like, oh, like I'm not, I don't feel like it's 100 percent there. Like, I feel like something's missing, or I'm like it's not working, or there's something not like the same fire, or this drive, like all this stuff. Then it's like, okay, what's what's happening? Let's let's take a look. Let's take a step back and see where we're at. Um, I know I've done that recently with, with especially with my schoolwork kicking up and, and you know work schedule and everything like that. I'm like, okay, I need to take a step back and figure out how am I spending my time? What am I doing wisely? What's getting what's getting done? What's not getting done? Am I spending time? Like I have the tracker on my phone about uh, how much I spend time doing it, anything in each individual app. And I, like, I review that as well. I'm like, okay, cool. I spent way too much time on TikTok. You shouldn't do that. Like, but making sure that it's like, if you ever feel a little like bent out of shape or stuff like that, like take a step back, catch your breath, like, look at what's going on around you. It's really lost, or really easy to get lost in just like, the motion of it and the idea that you're going in the right direction because that's what you had set first off, first and foremost. To where it's like, okay, reevaluate, reassess. Is what I'm doing working? Are there results that are attached to it? And are the results as quick or as beneficial as I thought it was? If not, can I make a change? Is it gonna work? We, can we test it out? Okay, let's make that change, let's go for it. And it's just that constant like retest, retry, reobserve, reassess, implement again, and just boom, boom, boom. That same thing always rotating through. Yeah, exactly. What's not okay is changing the goal, right? Like mm-hmm. you don't wanna give up on yourself or give up on the goal right. just because you hit a roadblock or it's taking longer for you to, to get to where you're at you're at because you're you know life comes up things happen all the time life is never going to slow down enough for you to really stay on track uh, you just have to constantly reassess your plan and what you're doing to get there but changing the goal or giving up that's definitely not an option that's not going to help you out um, you're always going to hit roadblocks you know life's going to throw stuff at you life comes at you at all of us very fast um, and we just got to be able to be okay with like many failures or many setbacks, learn from them, grow from them, uh, reassess what we did that got us there and continue on our path, but never throw in the towel. Absolutely not. I think it's a good way to end it off. I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm fired up, let's go do let's something. Let's get it, yeah. <laughs> you, wanna, you wanna set us on with this one? Um, you ever done a family on three? Oh, I don't think so. Is it my turn? Yeah. All right, all right, Fit Fam. Thank you guys for tuning in. We love you guys. Uh, remember, every Wednesday, eleven thirty, coffee with the coaches. Let's get a family on three. One, two, three. Family. Family.